We definitely want to be using that more aggressively. We're going to go back to this game, which uh, I actually haven't watched all the way through yet. I read in the email that apparently this game was a complete disaster. So it's going to be very interesting to see. Let's have a look at our team lineup. We have mono support. Okay. We have mono support. So that changes a little bit of how we're going to be playing. We have Windowmaker on the Symmetra. I'm going to have a slurp of coffee as well while we just mull over this. So what we're really looking at is pretty goddamn simple. Um, we're going to be playing very defensively around the choke point. We want to maximize the effectiveness of Symmetra's turrets. So McCreep or Symmetra actually synergize very, very well. If someone runs in, the punish is very, very strong, where we just throw the flashbang and we get a, a stun on them, and then they're just held in the beams, and it just gets some quick kills. Uh, apparently, Benny says this game was the first ranked McCree game. And also... um. Like, uh, item, uh, item, item mails. Look at this name. Look at this name, guys. This chap. Item mouse. Item mouse. We're going to go with item mouse. Does say switch to short crosshair. It's better than dot. I actually agree on McCree. You want short crosshairs. It's just a little bit better. Okay, we're going to be focusing on this game right now. So the big thing I'm noticing as well is, okay, we've got mono support. This means that the support is going to be mostly focused on healing, like, these two in particular. You three need to look after yourselves. Um, so if we are low on hit points, don't be afraid to go and pick up a health pack, even if it's a little bit of a run. Don't rely on Anna for healing. This is the big, big thing I'm noticing right now. Apparently this was a bit of a stomp um, in the other direction. So because it was Iconvald, the reason why I did the Route 66 instead of this one is when I see the word stomp on Iconvald, I just think it's going to be at this choke point for about 10 minutes. So we're going to see how that goes. Okay. Maybe. Apparently, I think someone is asking, like, where are so many diamonds on the enemy team? It's like, well, they might not actually be diamond, because you don't lose the diamond badge, even if you're on platinum. Mm -hmm. Okay, we want to be playing mostly around this choke point. Symmetra set up turrets, I imagine, ahead just to build up a little bit of early charge. She's going to run back immediately. Well, we're going to be standing somewhere a little bit closer, like more like here. So if anyone does make it through the choke, we can just flashbang them. Otherwise, we can retreat to here. If they try and make it through here, then we're dealing, uh, then we can just stop them in this choke point with the sun as well. Like we have a lot of good position options. Even being on this side as well is actually very, very strong because that gives us access to the health pack. But I prefer being just over here a little bit and then moving more towards this side if we do start feeling a bit worried. Otherwise, good span. They have a Maywall. Oh, hey, Winston. Good, 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 good. We just want to delete that one as soon as possible. Up all right, though, gets absolutely murdered. Symmetra. Symmetra. Symmetra, why? Symmetra is fucked up. They're just poured in. Now we're in a lot of trouble. Good shooting there, though, Tex. Good, 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 good. You say this is your first FPS game. Like, this is actually pretty goddamn solid, then. I'd say you've played very similar before. Actually, wait, what? I'm actually very... What the fuck? Okay, uh, the reason why I'm confused, guys, is because I looked down at his health and saw that it, you can't quite see it, but... The shield generator is already going up, so the enemy team has just screwed up in a big way. Evil Olive, welcome to the many. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. Everyone give him some love. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So apparently the enemy team coming out of spawn just got destroyed by, uh, I'm guessing, a right-click plus the the turrets, because we already have a shield generator. This makes it actually not as dire as it looks, because we're actually very, very strong as a team right now. And now I'm less angry at Symmetra for not resetting up her uh, turrets, just because she was putting down the shield generator. That's it, I imagine it's about to go down, because judging by this. Otherwise, we're in a little bit of trouble. Uh, but we've actually managed to hold it off. Because we've got that shield generator down, we're actually very, very strong. Like, you notice that we are not dropping down that low. We definitely want to be chasing that. That's going for our shield generator. We cannot let that die. The fact that we've let that go is actually very, very bad. We're the, one of the best people to deal with that. So when something like that happens, when someone like runs into the back line, the question always on my mind is, who on our team is going to be dealing with it? Well, Soldier 76, not really great at dealing with it. Reinhardt's busy at the front line. Rodog wants to be busy at the front line. Symmetra could kind of deal with it, but Symmetra is going to be... I think she's busy running back from spawn. We want to be the ones going and hunting that down, dealing with that um, Winston as soon as possible. Okay. Ooh, this is why I tell Reinhardt to like, be very careful about your fire striking, because we just get rinsed by that. Let's say our team seems to be doing okay without us. Probably fine, we're moving back towards the point. Again, stick near the Reinhardt, that's our job right now. 
want to be a little bit closer to that Reinhardt as well. Like at this distance, if they're over here, we're going to struggle dealing meaningful damage. Like even though we just landed a headshot, an estimate that headshot did about 100, 110 damage, where if we were, we were a bit closer, about 10 meters closer, we would be looking at 130, 140 to max damage, you know. So we want to be that little bit further, a uh, little bit further forward, rather than this far back. Like being this far back isn't helping us at all. It's actually helping the enemy team when you know we're not that much safer from Roadhog that far back. We're not safer from Solid 76 that far back. We're not really at a big advantage here. Winston overextends. This would be a good time to flash. A little bit too late on that, unfortunately. Um, feels bad, man. Winston managed to get a kill. They're firing off sights. We just want to take it slow. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. I'm actually fine with how we're doing this. Oh. I don't think he even looked at us. Did he even look our way, Solid 76? I don't think he gave a damn. I think we just appeared on his visor and just killed us instantly. This is also the danger when you are on mono support. When we let that shield generator go, Symmetra's value just plummets. Um, it becomes very hard for her to reset up. And now she's actually stuck as well because she's got a bad spawn, so she can't swap. So she has to save Symmetra for this point. And is already complaining, apparently. No DPS and no heals. Well, when mono support, no shit, there's going to be no heals. <laughs> like Anna just saying, yeah, I'm doing my best. Ugh. Don't be this guy. Don't be this guy. Oh god, the chat's descending into anarchy as well, because people keep teasing Mist. Stop teasing Mist, people. This is actually good positioning from us. We want to just be behind the Reinhardt, supporting the Reinhardt, making sure that we're giving value to the Reinhardt. Hey, Winston. Okay, we got caught out a little bit there, just because the rest of our team was completely set up in a different location at the moment. Now we've got more support, so we have a little bit more time. Uh, let's have a bit of a coffee slap. So the big thing I'm noticing is, again, we're just a little bit too far back. Well, we're not exerting that zone of pressure, that zone of control. Hey, free kill! Would have been fine with a, a roll after that, because he's gone for the large health now. Now he's actually gonna be a little bit hard to kill if he jukes properly he kind of is there we go you can see mccree uh you can see lucio is a complete complete bastard does eventually go down good stun oh unfortunately we get deleted by the right click and i think in this instance again we see a little bit of hubris where we're in a position where you know we don't have that many bullets so mccree uh mccree no lucio instantly lands the right click i wouldn't be wouldn't be fussing seeing a, like a roll after him just to land that bit of damage just because he's going now for that healing Luckily, the Lucio jukes a little bit badly, he's juking slowly, so we managed to land enough damage on him to finally confirm the kill, especially with soldiers coming the other way. We just unfortunately run into two tanks that then mob us and kill us. Okay, feels bad, man. As I said, our team looks to be doing okay-ish. Ish. Ugh, it's still going a bit badly, isn't it? It's not going too well out there. Things are still a bit frantic and hectic and a little bit panicky. We haven't quite reset on what we need to be doing. I think, by the way, chasing that Lucio, I think, is perfectly value, uh, perfectly valuable and worth doing. It just, I, I might have given up on him once you picked up the large health pack, just because better Lucios will be able to bounce around and be that little bit harder to finish off. And so moving to the rest of your team and make sure that you win the rest of the fight could have been more important. Again, just a little bit far back. Good shot there. Almost get out. Almost. Almost. Not quite. Ooh. Feels bad, man. So again, I'd say we're just a little bit too far back. We're not quite finding our optimal range for McCree, which is a little bit nearer. I mean, we're still doing good damage here. Like, this is a beautiful shot. I think we're just a little bit closer. Then it splits up our DPS as well. Our soldier can stay back a little bit. We can be nearer the action. Just exerting that, that zone of control. Okay. We're doing all right. Like, it's not, it's not quite panic stations just yet. I have really bad indigestion for some uh, for some reason today. Good lord. Okay, doing all right. And we're looking for the dead eye, so I'm okay-ish with this positioning. What the hell happens here? Two people got knocked off. That I'm actually fine with using the left. Click. Oh. I am actually fine with using the left click there, just because we can see that she is sub 50 hit points, so the left click will kill at this range, so we don't have to worry about right clicking. It sets us up very easily. So that's good, 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 good. That's it. We're being a little bit too fancy right now with our positioning. Like, we spent a while, we've got one kill, but now we've spent a while just walking around in a position where we don't actually see the enemy for a little while. Either, like, go up there and just stay up there, or make a decision, jump down as quickly as you can, rather than just walking around for a little while. Doing okay, doing some good damage here, actually. We're getting away with a lot. This is greedy as all fuck, though. Holy shit, we actually get value out of it. Holy shit, that could have gone so badly. 
like this is already uh, a little bit greedy just because like this could go wrong very quickly luckily that anna looks a little bit overworked so she's trying to like, heal up the winston if that sleep dart hit then we've just thrown away so much the fact that we managed to get value out of that is honestly very very surprising and a failure by their team to do proper more work fell off sorry love it love the apology um but yeah like at least you made up for the mistake like i always say that when you make a mistake the best thing to do is just correct it and you you managed to do that by getting value slowing down their team's push a little bit we have a bastion for some reason don't know why don't know why really don't know why uh apparently there's been a whisper bot in the chat um like just ignore it don't click on the link whatever the fuck you do there's not much i can actually do about a whisper bot as well it's very very annoying don't like the decision to do this if this does happen however uh honestly like high noon is actually very very powerful with the nano boost so i'd be thinking more rather than just trying to left click stuff to death once the nano boost hits us and it might have been going for i don't know what the decision was because i would love to see this go into the reinhardt instead don't be afraid to high noon in this instance like step back towards here so where you're still contesting the point and just high noon the damage boost actually still works with the um the high noon so you will deal a huge amount of damage and get a bunch of kills if they try and keep contesting the point if they try and keep uh, pushing the point you can really really cut down stuff uh a little bit of coffee a little bit of coffee just keep us going oh we're moving through this game you notice like so we you know, we're having a little bit of trouble. We're not really exerting too much pressure. Apparently, Widowmaker has now gone to Reaper after going to Lucio and Bastion. This guy seems a bit of a comedian. He's panic picking left, right, and center and doesn't really seem to know what to do. This position I don't like in the slightest. Um, again, we're just not at an effective range. We want to be closer, more into the action where we can exert that pressure. Good, 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 good. We're not doing anything back there. We're doing a lot over here, though. Don't be afraid to flashbang this. If you flashbang this, there's no way Reaper dies there. Like, you come in, you flashbang, you keep the Reaper alive. By not flashbanging, you're just leaving the door open for the enemy team to get a little bit of an advantage. It would have also been off cooldown by now. So again, don't be afraid to flashbang this May, for example. Uh, wait for the flashbang to come off cooldown. You would have flashbang, kill, no problem there with the Solid Series 6. We're just being a little bit hesitant with the biggest tool that we have in our toolbox, which is, of course, that flashbang. Now we're in a lot of trouble because we're basically going to have to do kind of a naked high noon to try and stall for time naked high noons generally don't go very well uh now we're in a really bad situation as well i would have probably just dropped the high noon just coming out of spawn here like i would have just fired it off right now right now um because what it does to the enemy team is it says you can't come around this corner without being very very vulnerable and it means that this diva survives that a little bit longer by running in and left clicking like what we're hoping to do is maybe kill may but it's going to take like three shots to kill may especially at this distance it's going to be very difficult to finish her off if we get lucky and more likely than not she's just going to get healed up by their anna anyway okay now we're actually in an okay position to get this high noon off dropping it nice and safe tucked away good 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 I think I would have used it a little bit earlier just to buy a little bit of time for our team to get back like mostly using it for the space rather than hoping to get a kill or two down the line that said I have a very low opinion of Deadeye that could just be my opinion on Deadeye um, I mostly use it as a zoning tool anyway and I think any kills you get with it are a big big bonus because right now we are definitely in stalling mode where we are just looking to buy time and stop pushes as much as we can so let's have a look what's happening right now so we want to be staying around the point, actually, we can let Lucio go, we don't want to be over pushing that, don't over chase that, don't over chase that, stay behind the barrier, stay behind the barrier as much as you can. We're being a little bit over eager here, even though we have a Reaper, we do want to be helping deal with this Winston, just because combined we can just kill stuff. Now we end up a little bit isolated because we're hunting targets a little bit too far forward, a little bit further out of range. Uh, apparently Windowmaker wants to report Soldier and McCree. Don't know why. Don't know why. A little bit of an arsehole, unfortunately, happens in games. Just ignore him. You've actually done okay. Considering how messy the game's been, you've done alright. I just say, again, the positioning thing just needs to be a little bit rectified. Tuck into that Reinhardt a little bit more. Cuddle up to them a little bit more. But, yeah, don't... Don't ever feel bad with that. Okay. Let's just skip forward. Uh oh. just ignore this person. Don't. Sometimes I hate this game. Yeah, you just got to ignore it. 
Like you've actually been doing okay considering the circumstances. There, like that window maker person has been doing more to throw the game than you have been by picking Bastion, by swapping left, right, and center, by putting your team in an awkward position. Um, it's caused a lot of issues. Well, we're going to tr actually try and blitz through this attack. I think it's only going to last five minutes anyway. Oh! Feels bad, man. This is the danger of Junkrat. This is why we want to be tucked behind the Reinhardt Barrier as much as possible. But that said, the Reinhardt Barrier is definitely going to lose out here. Don't like this Reaper pick at all. Don't like what Reaper tried to do there at all. Um, that's never going to work. We go down because Reinhardt's getting out DPS because we don't have any frontline DPS. D was trying to distract on the point. We need to just let that work. I think too many people are trying to wrap around here. I think if the enemy team responds appropriately, which they might be doing, we're going to have a very hard time. Someone's actually run out here. This is actually a big opportunity for us. We want to try and capitalize on this. Don't be afraid to roll after that Reinhardt to try and catch him up. Because if we kill that Reinhardt, we actually have a really good chance to push here. We're still okay. We're still okay as long as our Reinhardt doesn't panic too much. Oh, almost done the shot there. Feels bad, man, that we missed it. Let's keep it rolling, keep it rolling, keep it rolling. Don't be afraid to flashbang the mages to discourage her. Very, very good job by Anna there. Good, 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 good. We actually have the door open here. This is looking perfectly fine as a push. Slamming the damage. Looking good. Don't be afraid to chase down this uh, Lucio as well if he tries to run too fast with a roll. Good job. I managed to left kicking down. Here's mistake by backing up towards where the enemy team is advancing. He should be backing away towards where the enemy team isn't going to be coming from, which is towards their spawn. We're actually in a bit of a dice situation. Would have liked to see the flashbang there before the hook, because if that Roadhog did things properly, you would have died instantly. You know, in a panic situation like this, where we turn a corner, Rodog's here, he's noticed us, just flash, then roll. Don't roll, then flash, because we should have died here. We got lucky that we didn't. Maybe we can capitalize on it. Yes, we do. Reaper gets a good kill. We start moving towards the point. It's looking pretty good, actually. It's looking okay. Biggest mistake the enemy team by made, by the way, the reason, I think, in my mind, the entire reason why the enemy team is losing is because their Reinhardt went crazy, decided to charge out and come near our spawn. That's a, so, so, such a bad idea. I don't know why you did that, because then your team just kills the Reinhardt and pushes in. We're actually doing okay here. Yeah, we want to get rid of that Reinhardt, but oh, we want to be wary of the threats around us. We really want to be keeping an eye out, because the enemy's team spawn is going to be coming in this way. We usually expect things to come out here, but don't be too surprised to see things occasionally coming out of other places as well. So now it's very, very dicey, actually. We need to regroup, but we need to try and keep our foot in the door. What do I mean by keeping our foot in the door? I mean... we. We don't want to let them set up once again on that choke point. We want to make sure that they can't get yeah, the Junkrat spam out there. That's uh, been trying to do so. We've ended up dying. Okay, we're just going to reset. Be very, very wary of that Junkrat spam. Be very, very wary of the Junkrat spam. Like, even this position right now, yeah, you can see we're just dead. Because it's a damage amp Junkrat, those grenades are going to be hitting like a fucking truck. Um, so we want to be super careful about, like, damage sources coming in. I mean, let, let's be let, let's be realistic about this situation. Even if we land a shot or two, what are we doing? We're not charging up our ultimate. We're dealing about 40 damage if we're landing body shots. Maybe about 80 damage if we're landing a headshot. And then it's instantly getting killed by Mercy and Anna. So even if we do land shots here, we're not actually doing anything. So we want to be a little bit more careful about our positioning and what we're doing. Because if we're alive, May can't do things like that. Where if she jumps down, then you just flash bang her and she just dies. She, almost does, she actually does die as a result. Unfortunately, Anna gets out of position, dies. Feels bad, man. We're going to be trying to get back in. Reaper manages to get in. It's a good opportunity to hide in while everyone's distracted. They drop the beat. Okay, okay, okay. Probably fine with this. I mean, it's already gone badly. Like the second that... I think Reaper got a little bit over-eager there, maybe. I'm trying to figure out exactly what's happening in this fight, because... Like, Reaper's going in, and I think he's looking for Mercy and Junkrat... Doesn't get anything, though. They drop the beat. Good trade for the Deadeye. Perfectly fine with that trade. We just want to back out now. Try and heal. Oh, Shadow comes out. Okay. We've lost this fight. Honestly, Reinhardt and Anna just need to be backing out, resetting. And we need to be going in for a big push next time because we have a lot of ultimates ready. So we can actually just relax. Windowmaker, though, is deciding to throw. Um, which doesn't surprise me in the slightest. So let's get back to the point. It still seems to actually have worked. I mean, Symmetra isn't too bad at going through this. We want to be avoiding those fire strikes as much as possible, though. We definitely don't want to be taking that damage. Just because I think we are running on one healer at the moment. So we're going to be struggling a little bit. We want to be careful about our positioning as well. Like, if any damage is coming in, we only have 80 hit points, so that happens. Um, so, yeah, don't go and nuzzle up to the wall if you're only on 80 hit points. That feels bad, man. Because he just spots you and kills you. We want to be very careful when on low hit points, especially if we are stuck on one healer, because someone is deciding to be a little bit of a jerk. Um, we just want to be that much more careful. And also, like, there's a health pack in that building. Like, if you just stepped in there, picked up the health pack, you would have been fine. 
Okay. Building up for the next fight, firing the hard coming out, May War comes up. We really want to be pushing very, very soon. Sticking near this area is fine, we're just backing off. Actually in a little bit of danger. We'll miss the shots! Oh no, feels bad, man, feels bad, man. But Zarya gets it. Okay, okay, okay. No point telling you don't miss, just don't miss. <laughs> but honestly, your shooting's been actually fine, I'd say, throughout the game. <sighs> we do actually have uh, we do actually have a Lucio, but I think Lucio was then away, so it didn't get the healing. Okay, that was it for coaching the many twist chat. Now is a very good time to start asking questions while we wrap up the show for now. So, first and foremost, happy new year to everyone on the continent in Europe. That's going to be a lot of my viewers, I imagine. Uh, yeah, happy new year. Welcome to 2017. Thank you for being with me when you're going to 2017. Go give your family a hug if they're around you. Go give your friends a hug if they're around you. Drink some wine. Have a good time. Okay. Let's, let's bring Twitch chat on to the show. Whoop. There they are. Say hello, Twitch chat. Happy New Year, Twitch chat, if it is Happy New Year time. Uh, is it better to have two healers and have Symmetra take a DPS spot in the standard 2-2-2 comp? I think solo healing is usually a dumb idea. Right now, honestly, it feels like Anna is taking up the solo healing spot, and if your Anna is good enough, then you can just run Symmetra. Um, but you want to be running stuff that takes care of itself, so you want to have Soldier 76 for self-healing. Roadhog who can self-heal, then you have the Anna looking after the Reinhardt and the Diva, which are the usual two that go with it. Um, if we change to like the 2-2-2 comp, I still kind of don't like swapping out one of the DPS just because you lose a lot of range potential, so in theory the enemy team will just be able to poke you down and should be able to win off the back of that. Um, they'll just poke down your Reinhardt's barrier and then just slowly grind forward and win the fight that way. They won't be rushing into you. If they start rushing into you, then they're fucking up. McCree, uh, McCree was a flavor of ice cream, what would he be? Um, something with caramel in it. Like a chocolate caramel sort of thing. Chocolate caramel swirl ice cream. That's, that's what I think McCree would be. Beautiful question. Uh, would you say McCree and Soldier have similar roles on the team? Yes, uh, very, very similar roles. Like This is where you'll see... I think this is where we'll see um, when Soldier is in the meta, McCree will just sort of fade away a little bit, and when McCree's in the meta, Soldier will fade away. They both are very much built for that mid-range, just the big difference is Soldier is built for mid to long range, McCree is built to, for mid to close range. Right now, mid to long range is where a lot of sort of poke is going on, a lot of, um, sort of slow-paced damage. Um, McCree's burst was nerfed down pretty heavily so he's no longer a big tank shredder um flashbang is still a really fucking good ability it's still really powerful mccree's by no means a bad pick it's just right now it feels like soldier 76 is a slightly better one uh, especially if you are playing like high behind tanks a lot and playing very very passively he's just the better pick right now how do you make mccree more relevant again um I want to see how things happen, how things work when the tank mana dies down a little bit. If we see more flankers coming in, then you'll see McCree making a comeback. McCree's still very good against Tracer and Genji, for example. Um, if they're running very aggressive dive-based comps, that's when McCree also gets a bit stronger. So if Winston, for example, comes back in. If like Winston, Diva, Tracer, Genji come in, and you get these super aggro comps, McCree's going to make a comeback. Like McCree can deal with that better than Solar 76. And actually, if they run that, then maybe you'd see even Reaper making a comeback. Just as like the engagement range gets closer and closer and closer, the stun gets more and more valuable. That's when McCree will come back. So I wouldn't actually be changing McCree right now. I'd be hands off with him. Let's get rid of tank meta first and then see how the dust settles, see how the various heroes interact. Because if you start changing McCree now, we could end up with McCree being overpowered again. Who are some good McCree pros to watch besides IDDQD? IDDQD is the most prolific streamer. Tavik is a very good uh, McCree. AKM, very, very good McCree. Plays for Team Liquid, um, I think. I don't know. AKM is Rogue. Sorry, I'm thinking of AZK. Um, AZK also, I think, is a very good McCree. I'm terrible at names, so forgive me if I get them wrong. Uh, IDDQD, Tavik, and um, Taimu as well. Taimu is very, very good on the McCree. Definitely worth watching that. Um, sure for... Can't really go wrong with your force hit scan as well. It'd be pretty solid. Like, there's a lot of good pros that play McCree. Like, McCree was in the meta for absolutely ages, so yeah. Can you explain the mechanics of McCree's ultimate? So, basically, um, what the skulls are representing is how much damage you're going to do until lethal. Um, so, that's, you know, when it turns into a red skull, um, that's when you're going to do lethal damage. The way it works is basically imagine once you've got a lock on something, it's just like a meter building up going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so on, so on, so on, very, very quickly, building up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Um, I don't think it even caps out on a max. I think if actually someone has overhealed or if like they get a Symmetra Barrier or a Lucio Sound Barrier, the longer you've been on them, you'll still do more damage. 
Damage Amp does affect Deadeye as well. I've heard mixed things about whether it affects the rate that the skulls appear or not, and I've seen conflicting things with that, but it could just be me seeing things that are weird. Um, but in general, you can just generally release a little bit earlier if you have a Mercy Damage Boost, or if you have Damage Amp. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty simple. Can I be a good soldier and tell McCree I find it very difficult to flick shoot? Yes, yes you can. Soldier 76 is a lot more forgiving in terms of his aiming. Like, you, the tracking is a lot easier, because if you can miss the first shot, you're generally just, like, acquiring the target a lot more as you go. Um, with McCree, if you miss the shot, then you just miss the shot, and it's very easy to, like, miss a bunch of shots in a row. So that's actually much easier. I'm going to make a video detailing mini objectives for each character. If you only found any mini objectives quite useful, that's kind of what these videos are doing. Uh, I should get back and doing very concise videos very soon, though. That's sort of one of my plans for the new year, so we're going to get back to doing that. It's definitely one of the higher priorities. Does Nano Boost increase high news damage? Yes. Yes, it does. Uh, does the damage charge up? Can you break Ryan's shield? Yes, you can. Uh, one of the best things to do, if there's a Reinhardt with a very big barrier, like a very high hit point barrier, and they're all stuck in a um, Graviton Surge, if you just charge the high noon and just drop it, like, you know, when you see a couple of dolls appear, you will deal a huge amount of damage and it will probably break the barrier pretty much instantly. Don't be afraid to use High Noon to actually shatter a barrier that's taken a lot of damage. Is 213 still viable if one of the three DPS is Sombra? Um, yeah, mm, hmm, hmm, yeah, kind of. If you can make it work, maybe. I'd say... Uh, the thing with that is it doesn't really work on attack because on attack you, you want your healer to be flexible. Like running single healer on attack is very, very difficult um, just because there's usually a lot of damage flying around. You're going to be running without a Lucio. You're probably going to be running with an Ana. And when you're on attack, you don't really have time to run around and pick up health packs either. So it's kind of a bit weak. Why am I hearing fireworks down in the UK? Because it isn't even 2017 yet. Uh, it's because the UK is full of chavs that like hearing explosives. That's why. Uh, do you find that Fan the Hammer is unreliable? I cannot get any kills with it. You get used to how the spread works with practice. The big thing is it bucks upwards and a direction. So it will go up and left, or it will go up and right. Um, in general, you want to be focusing on like making sure you're cancelling the vertical recoil as much as possible. So you know, pull down the mouse very slowly when you're doing it. So bring the mouse down a little bit. And then you'll generally find it. Also, just make sure that you're aiming like center mass. There's no reason to be aiming anywhere near the head. Make sure you're aiming at like the biggest part of the enemy character. So like for Widowmaker and Mercy, it's the butt. For Roadhog, just aim at the stomach. Like there's no reason to get fancy with the aiming there. You mentioned at the start protecting healers. What do you do as a healer being attacked by flankers and you're not being protected? Um, a, just let the team know. Don't be an asshole about it. Don't go, guys, for fuck's sake, no one's protecting me. Man. It's just like going... Uh, yeah, guys, this Genji's giving me a really hard time. I'm gonna stand next to you, McCree. If Genji goes for me, just kill him. Um, make sure that you are, are in a position where you can be protected. So if you do have a McCree, stand near him. If you have like a Reinhardt, for example, standing near him isn't too bad of an idea, especially if you're like a Lucio. Um, like tucking in a little bit more if they're playing a very flanker heavy comp isn't a bad idea. Just stay near things that can help you a little bit more. And then just be wary of it. Like as a um, like a selfish minded healer a little bit, especially if you're playing like Anna Zenyatta. Um, don't be afraid to spend a little bit more time just looking out for threats rather than focusing purely on healing and then just dealing with them yourself. Theoretically, if tank matter is gone with McCree, see a resurgence with Soldier continue to dominate. I think Soldier will continue to dominate. He just does more damage at the moment. Um, and with Nano Boost still being very strong, Nano Boost plus um, Tactical Visor is just so powerful that it'll be not worth getting rid of. Your 4 is a good McCree to watch, yeah. Your 4 is very, very good. How do you know when to high noon? I Like I said, I'm not a high noon expert. I generally use it to space things out. And Like, if I get one kill with it, I generally feel pretty happy. Um, anytime when the enemy team is pushing into you, anytime when the enemy team is... I, again, if it's kind of self-explanatory, and it sounds very obvious, but anytime they're going to be stood in an open space, or anytime they really need to be in an area at a specific time, so if they need to go in and contest the point, well, that's a great time to high noon if you can overlook it. Um, stuff like, you know, when I think of, like, what's a really good high noon, stuff like... Um, Nepal, the Sanctum point, the indoor point, like when they're all running onto the point and if you're on like one of the, the balconies around, you just high noon, they have nowhere to run. You're going to get one or two kills off the back of that. Really, really good spot to high noon as well is um, Numbani. Um, don't be afraid, like on the final point, if you go up and over and then just drop down on high noon, you can usually get one or two kills when the enemy team is pushing in. It's a little bit risky to do, it's a little bit flash to do, but you can generally get some value off doing the back of that. Do you think Symmetra will find you outside of the first point when, uh, besides when being overpowered? 
I assume you mean that if Symmetra gets nerfed, do you think we'll see her outside of the first point? It depends on what the nerf is. Right now, I'd say that Symmetra, still, Symmetra is just sort of very, very powerful, very, very viable. I can very much see that the next meta will probably involve Symmetra in some way. I really expect it to involve Symmetra in some way. IDDQD, Tavik, Shure 4, and who else? Um, AKM, Rogue AKM. AKM is very, very good. Like, even though Tavik can play a goddamn mean... Um, McCree, AKM is probably one of the best in the world. I'm not sure he streams that much. Taimu, also incredibly good as well. Um, is Dead Eye plus Asiata a reliable combo? Yes, it's a very, very good combo. And then for gaming from Taimu from McCree. Yep, Taimu is very, very good to watch. Uh, like, if you get an opportunity to watch him stream, he's playing McCree, very good place to learn from. If you have a high noon, lock onto the Rhine with a shield up, with the damage keep rising, or will it stop at, at top HP? I'm not actually 100% sure. You're going to have to look that up elsewhere. I imagine... I think it stops, but I'm not sure. If I'm going into the training room shooting a wolf, I found the hammer is useful. You can see the speed of the bullets. Gets... Yeah, uh, you can see, I imagine you mean to say you can see the spread because the bullets are hit scan, they're instant. But yeah, you can see that it goes up. And, like The thing with uh, I found the hammer is it goes up and then left, or it goes up and then right. It will do one or the other. It won't like go up and then left, right, left, right, left, right. It goes like do 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 or do 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 It doesn't go do 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 It's It's got like a predictable spray to it once... The spray is locked in. Like you don't know if it's going to go left or right, but you can kind of cheese it by just aiming low enough and then adapting. Is it acceptable to make flankers back off, or should I go for the kill? It's acceptable to make them back off. Uh, if flank, if they're running flankers, flankers want to be getting eliminations and kills as quickly as possible. If they're not doing that, then you've done your job. Then you can just continue putting pressure out on the front line. If they have to back off and they aren't killing your healers, you'll probably just win the fight because you're still engaged actively in the fight. Like you can stand in the middle of the fight more than they can. How do you deal with the Genji more effectively? I try to flashbang, but they often outplay. Um, McCree versus Genji at high level becomes like a really mind gamey kind of thing. Just don't rush to get the flashbang and learn to flashbang either very high in the air so it goes over Genji. Just keep in mind that Genji's deflect hitbox is enormous or right in front of you on the floor. Uh, it's a very, very good way of doing it. And other than that, like left clicking him to death is a very good way of doing it. Uh, if you do learn the flashbang, do not be afraid to just right click him to death. Uh, it's a very, very good way of beating him down as well. If he does flashbang you, don't panic. The only thing he can do, like at the end of the deflect animation, is dash. Like, that's the only way he can cancel out of it. So you're at most going to take 50 damage before you can actually start fighting back. Recommended beginner DPS, Soldier 76. Um, it's just the default pick. He's built to be a beginner DPS. He's built to be easier to pick up and learn. Um, just keep in mind that your spread starts after four shots. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And I think that will wrap us up for now in coaching the mini. Went a little bit long, but we decided to cover both. Uh, usually, like, one match takes about an hour, but because it was a quick match, it didn't take us a full hour, so hey. Uh, thank you very much to Banny. Hopefully, this has been somewhat useful. Would like to just see a little bit more flashbanging, a little bit more rolls for class repositions. Don't be afraid. Don't feel ashamed to use right clicks or whatever. No shame in it. Your left clicking looked really fucking good. Um, definitely think that, you know, you said you were a Lucio main in the summer. Like, you can definitely play McCree. I don't feel bad about that. Okay, guys, say goodbye uh, Twitch chat to YouTube. YouTube uh, and Twitch chat as well. If you want to send something into Coaching the Mini, you send it into oamreviews at gmail.com. Put in the title of uh, the email, the hero name, the rank that it's at, and if you're a Twitch subscriber or not, they just get a little bit of extra priority in terms of like who gets picked and who doesn't. So if I'm deciding between two videos, um, I'll usually go with the Twitch subscriber unless the other video is that much better. Um, it's just a little bit of a bonus. And um, let me think, is there anything else I need to talk about? I don't think so. So feel free to come join us on the Twitch stream YouTube if you did manage to make it all the way to the end of this. We do stream at 10 p.m. GMT uh, on Friday and Saturday doing Coaching the Menu. We also stream on uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday as well. We're also going to be doing a, a bonus stream on Tuesday as well uh, a little bit more often. Are you looking for some Sombra footage? Sure, send it in, Artie. Send it in. I'll have a look at it. I actually got some Symmetra footage. You actually got a little bit of Tracer footage as well. Wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more of that just because it was like a 15-minute Tracer match. I wouldn't mind having a full um, 30 minutes of games and then going from that. When were the, uh, the swap off for the Genji, my friend? That's already over. Anyway, uh, let me just finish out by saying toodles. <laughs>